Hi and welcome back to section 3, Home Auto First Screens. In this section we will decompose our sample application into components and start to create some more advanced ones. We will learn about the Angular template syntax, about some native directives and further concepts such as component providers and pipes. Our first video is about decomposing our application into components. So we will first identify them by looking at our application layout then we will apply an iterative style of splitting our HTML into components and assemble them back together to our app. Finally, we will also apply some guidelines on how to name our components, their files and folders. Ok, so I started with our project setup which we created in section 1. We have here again the main.ts file which is the startup file and I have an app component where I copied in a bunch of HTML code. I have taken this code from the Get Material Design light page, which is from Google. In particular, I have taken the dashboard template and I literally copied out the source file inside here and copied it back in into our components template property. I also installed the Material Design light library over npm, just as indicated on your page. And I added a bunch of assets which are needed for running our dashboard template. So right now our page is simply a static HTML page with some stylings on top. Our task now is to split the static page into components. By looking at the layout we can immediately spot some first potential candidates for components like the header bar here on top, the sidebar here which holds the menu, and finally there is the central area here which is some kind of dashboards with some nice charts. So let's apply what we learned in our previous section and split them out into separate components. The best strategy is to start iteratively until we reach a comfortably sized component. For instance we can start with our header HTML part here. We cut it out, we create a new header.ts file. Again we have our usual scaffold for an Angular 2 component and we paste in the template. Finally we export the header component and then we obviously have to go back to our app.ts file to our app component. We have to import our header component there and also remember to reference our component in the directives property of our app component. This is something which gets easily forgotten. Finally we can adjust the HTML code and reference our new app header component. If we refresh the application nothing changes so it still runs but if we inspect the HTML code we can see that our app header component is now being rendered. Great job! Also note that I left the original CSS classes directly on our component and I did not move them inside our components template. This way we maintain the deepness of the DOM tree and eventually prevent breaks of our CSS rules that might depend on the exact order of elements. So we can repeat now the same process also for our sidebar. We again take the HTML part here, we cut it out and we create a new sidebar.ts file just as we did with the header component. We can go a bit quicker here as it is just the same process as we did before. Obviously we have to go back to our app component again. We have to import our newly created component and also reference it on the directives property. Finally again we can swap out the HTML part here and reference our new app sidebar Angular 2 component. Again a quick check. It still renders so it seems to work properly. So this is really an iterative process, like if we open our sidebar, which we just created, we can clearly see that here there is another component, the profile for the user and also a menu on the bottom here. So again, we can extract that into a new component, let's call it profile, and then reference it again on our sidebar component. The very same step can also be done for the menu component below. I'm not going to show the entire process again, but I'd rather show you the final result. 
Okay, so we nicely refactored our sidebar. Again, let's have a quick check and it still seems to work. Finally, let's do the same for our last part, the dashboard. I simply cut this out here. Let's create a dashboard.ts file and I simply paste in the source code for the dashboard. Again, same process. We import the dashboard component and we reference it in our HTML code. As you can see, we get a final result where we have different components that get assembled together to make up an entire app. We could probably identify more components even, maybe even some that can be refactored out into general purpose libraries. So we now have some nice components, however if you look at our app folder it starts to get really messy. It's highly advisable to structure it into folders. These usually represent different responsibilities of our app or modules if you like. Right now there is no official style guide yet. However, there exist some common rules that are considered best practice in the community. So let's quickly remove all of our generated JS files to get a better overview. A first simple modification is to suffix our files with what they contain. So like in our case, components. Let's quickly do that for all of our components. And then let's create the folder structure. Like create a dashboard, a user profile folder, and finally a shell folder. Then let's move in the files to their corresponding folders. And after that, we also have to adjust our ES6 module imports. So let's quickly do that. Let's start our application again. We'll quickly refresh it and it still works. So what we get is a nice clean structure to sum up, in this video we built the foundation for our sample app we are building in this video course. We learned about how to identify and componentize our application into a first set of components, we learned about naming convention and how to organize our components into proper folders.